Blessings, blessings, blessings. Hello, friends. Welcome or welcome back to So I Came Across This Post, the podcast where we take snippets of online content and turn it into whole sync pieces. I'm your host, Charlie, the self-proclaimed ambassador of embracing and living your truth. Um... Hmm. Thank you for being here. I hope that when you're listening to this podcast episode, that you are feeling good. And even if you have an a blah moment, that you are comfortable being in that discomfort or being with that emotion or that and feeling and sensation, whatever's going on with you, that you are finding peace with it. Okay? I'm sending you so much love. I'm sending you just the energy of love and and gratitude because I am really grateful that you are here. So thank you for being here. And before we get started with this episode, I have some housekeeping to go over with you all. Okay. (laughs) For those who are listening on the um, audio, please know that this podcast is also available as a video format. And it is on the U of Tubes. And on YouTube, you can find us at So I Came Across This Post because we over there. Okay, so for the announcements, the housekeeping. First, I want to put you on notice that this episode does contain sensitive topics. Well, a sensitive topic. Um, We will listen to mentions and things regarding newborns being harmed. And in one instance, allegedly to have been murdered. Hopefully you'll understand why I'm saying allegedly as we go further into the discussion. Uh, I will not be going into the full details of the case that these situations are related to. But there will be some audio shared that speaks about the case. And I have done like a little, a little bit of research to add some context for you. And we'll, once we get into the, the main topics, I'll, I'll explain further. But for the most part, I do just want to put you on notice that there, this is a sensitive topic. And it does deal with babies being harmed, newborn babies at that. And so I just want to put that up front in case like that's not something you want to listen to right now. It sounds too sad. Please, please, I will give you, well, you'll have some time to just log on out uh, because we still got more housekeeping to go. So the first part is a disclaimer that this is a sensitive topic. And yes, I just want to put that in the forefront. Second, we do cite our sources for anything I discuss in this episode. There will be links to it. There will be videos of it, whatever it is on our show notes page on our website, which is so I came across this post.com. We are always going to cite our sources. My goal is always going to be to have the show notes up when the episode goes up. And so I will do my best to make sure that happens because I want you all to have access to the information. And since this whole podcast is based on content on the internet, why wouldn't I cite my sources? Okay. Why would not why wouldn't I cite my sources and why wouldn't I shout the people out? Thank y'all for the content because y'all get y'all helping me have content. Okay, so we can we can meet the family can meet up. So I give thanks for that and for that. As I said, the show notes will always be on our website. So I came across this post.com. Next, I want to encourage you all to subscribe to the podcast. Whether the audio version, the YouTube version, or both of them, we are available on most podcasts and platforms. And if we are not on your fave, please let me know because I'm trying to be where you at. So keep keep me in a loop because sometimes I might be missing things and I'm trying to be wherever y'all hang because it's a family affair. Okay. So yeah, so your support and acknowledgement of the podcast by tuning in, subscribing, rating, sharing with your friends, leaving feedback on the podcast, all of that helps us become more visible to more people. And hopefully we can all agree that there are many benefits to people knowing that we exist. 
<laughs> so I really do appreciate your support and I really do appreciate you taking the time out to listen to us, to rate, to leave feedback. I will tell y'all on another episode why you might hear me say us, we, and sometimes talk about myself in this third person. I will, one day, one day it might come up. So <laughs> if you notice it, please know that I'm aware of it as well. And I think last night I got some final insight and it all makes sense. So I will, I'll, I'll let y'all know. I'll keep you, let me go about my business. Okay. <laughs> Let me, let me finish this housekeeping. Okay. So finally, we do have a newsletter. Yes, it has. I got to tell y'all about the newsletter. We have a newsletter. And you can learn more about it by searching us on Substack. That's where the newsletter home is. Or by visiting the website to subscribe. There is, it's going to be on the homepage. And it will also be on our con connect page. So. There's so many ways for you to keep in touch, to be in touch, to vibe with me, to vibe with us. And I just want to make sure you have that information. And because we are a new podcast, this is why I'm putting this information up front. Clearly, I will not be doing this forever. This is just the beginnings of our of our lifetime as far as like the podcast go and of us connecting on this level. And so, yeah, I got some things to do to make sure our people find us. And I appreciate y'all because y'all helping me help us. And so we all, it's a family affair, okay? So with that, I thank you all for your patience and listening to those announcements. And I'm ready to get into what we came here for. Let's get into it. So this week's topic, I believe, is an important one. A couple of months ago, I saw a video about a case where a 19-year-old girl, who at the time was a patient in the ER, I believe, it was definitely a hospital, and I'm pretty sure it was the ER because she was like having back pains or something, but anywho, she ended up going into the ER and throwing her baby in the bathroom trash after giving birth to it. She gave birth to a boy. And she ended up throwing him in a trash. This took place in New Mexico. The newborn was later found by hospital staff and was found to be dead. The young lady was about 19 at the time and told staff that she was taking birth control, was menstruating, and had not been sexually active. It is said that she even went as far as to say that she was a virgin. I remember seeing this, that video and feeling disappointed, disappointed in not just the decision she made, but in the fact that she lied about having sex. And as her, her mom was there in the room when the hospital staff came in to let them know that they found a baby in the trash can in the bathroom in which she just came out of. And. It seemed like there was this lack of responsibility uh, for what the young lady had just done. And also how major what they were saying was. I want to be mindful because this is a sensitive topic. And I want to be mindful also because I can never imagine what it is to be in that young lady's shoes. Right. So I want to be compassionate radically compassionate about that and empathetic about it and at the same time it's just like WTF honestly it was sad to just hear that story to see the responses or the reactions to like what the staff were saying and in a moment I remember feeling like what the fuck why are people lying about having sex? What is happening in this world? Why is sex something to be ashamed of or embarrassed by? On top of learning about this story and another one, which we're going to talk about, recently someone said to me that they were concerned about their teenage child getting pregnant. In my mind, that sounded so immature. Because what? Like concerned about them getting pregnant specifically. 
or having sex generally. Like what they said was they were concerned about them getting pregnant, I guess, at a young age. But for me, as I thought about that, I'm like, why was pregnancy the concern and not what happens before that? The whole thing is a little questionable because these fears feel very surface level. I've heard so many parents, well, not recently, but I remember when I was younger, that seemed to be a concern getting thrown around, like, don't end up pregnant. You don't want to have a child really young. And as I think about it now, as an adult who's lived a bit, I'm kind and also have watched people raise kids because I don't have kids of my own have watched people raise kids, I'm just like, that concern seems so surface level. And for me, I'm questioning whether or not the parents are even unpacking what their actual concern or goals are. Are they just repeating that what they learned when they were growing up, right? When their parents were telling them, don't be a fast ass. <laughs> you better not come out of here pregnant, right? Like, I remember that being the case. And I, I wonder sometimes if people are just repeating the fears that their parents had as opposed to, like, them actually having a fear. Because I still don't understand what is the actual issue here. Is the issue them having sex? Or is the issue them ending up pregnant? And if the issue is them ended up pregnant, then I'm, I'm my question is, Is them ending up pregnant because there's now evidence that they were having sex, the issue? Or are you concerned that they can't take care of it? Like, or do you think that by having a child, their life is somehow ruined? Like, what is the actual, what's the vision here? I'm, I'm trying to understand what their, what their big picture is, I guess. I just feel like the parents aren't unpacking what their actual concerns or goals are. And they are just like repeating what they learned or experienced in their life and trying to justify whatever control techniques they are using on their child. With this story of I am trying to protect her from X, Y, Z. And in this case, maybe pregnancy at a young age, right? So I'm just curious about what it means for a young lady who is sexually active. What does it say about her? How is that influencing people not being honest about it? Even in situations where the truth is clearly going to be revealed. What is the point of lying about having sex? Especially to a medical professional where you are seeking out medical care because you're not feeling well. Like, what is the purpose? of lying what is the point of any of this again what is the goal what is the hope what do these young lady what what do these young ladies believe they are actually avoiding by lying by not being upfront about their circumstances and their situation so they can get the support and help they actually supposedly are seeking and need So what are they actually avoiding, you know, by holding the truth and attempting to protect it or cover it up? Now, these are just thoughts and questions that come to my mind. These circumstances and comments have my mind wandering. But I want to back this up a little bit, right? I want to start from the beginning, So if you haven't listened to the first episode of So I Came Across This Post, what I do basically is bring content pieces together that I feel like go flow well together. And we discuss it. Usually it will, because they flow well together, there will be a theme behind it. And so today we have three pieces of content. And two of them are very similar in that they are um, re regarding these cases of these young ladies Throwing these babies literally in the trash. So the first piece of content um, I want to talk about is not regarding the case, but it's like an opener for it. So let's start there. And that's what I mean by let me back up a little. So this first piece of content we have is a post on Twitter. So this was a post that I saw on Twitter and it's from the Enlightened Intuitive. Their ad is, duh, it's Kiera. It's so cute. 
duh, it's Kiara. But yeah, so their their ad is duh, it's Kiara. And the post says, sex is a natural part of life. It actually gives creation to life. Yet we are taught to not talk casually about it and to hide it because it's somehow too inappropriate. Question mark. Hmm. Sketchy. So someone in the comments says sketchy indeed. And I wrote in the comments because once I saw this, this was already something I had been thinking about because I had already saw at least this first case we're going to talk about. And so no matter of fact, I knew about both of these cases already. And so because this was a recent post. So when I saw this post, it really like I felt like someone else was having the same curiosities as me. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I don't get the big deal. Like, why can't we talk about sex? Something that is a natural part of life. Y'all say the cycle of life. Y'all, we are here to procreate all of these beautiful, beautiful blessings. And yet we can't have a conversation about it. Side note, I would never forget the times that like I've asked people about their STD status and they get offended. And I'm like, wait, so you want to have sex, but I can't ask you about your status? Excuse me? Like, it, it's just like, why are these rude things or why are they disrespectful things or why are they problematic conversations when for me, like, they're they just a part of life. There's no judgment. There's no nothing. It's just like, hey, I want to be informed. That's it. I just want to be informed. I want to know what I'm getting into. Like, why? You know, what we're doing is is important and special. And, and I'm opening myself up to you in a way that is very sacred and very important and very, like, uh, vulnerable. Why not have these conversations? Why not have these questions, right? And so, you know, the way I look at sex now, I did not look at it when I was a teen, I was a young teen or a young adult. So work in progress. OK, <laughs> but what I know now. All right. We're not there. <laughs> we are not. We are building our relationship. Let me not jump right in. No, I'm kidding. OK, I guess I'm kidding. Some not whatever. Moving along. She here. OK, so I wrote to the post. So again, I'm going to repeat the po- the initial post. The initial post was, sex is a natural part of life. It actually gives creation to life. Yet, we are taught to not talk casually about it and hide it because it's somehow too inappropriate. Mm, sketchy. So I wrote, I was thinking about this recently. The shame many feel when discussing sex or to admit they are engaging in it due to societal beliefs or and or generational conditioning. Boys my blood sometimes. Like, what the fuck? So, for starters, anytime I feel as if someone is being asked to hide their truth, I am standing front and center to ask why. So, me saying, like, it boils my blood is pretty much on brand for me. Like, on the same vibe as that, I really feel sad for our society sometimes. That there are so many rules in place and expectations of what's appropriate or not. And the amount of people that actually subscribe to them. I know it's not easy to be in a space where you have been conditioned to be a certain way, act a certain way, follow certain rules, carry yourself a certain way. When everyone else has subscribed to it as a truth, a must, the only way to be. You don't, you probably don't feel like there's much space for you to be anything else. Because then you'll be the outcast. Then you'll be the problem. Then you will be the black sheep, as many say. I was called the black sheep, and I really took it as a compliment. And somebody was like, that's not a compliment. And I'm like, why not? <laughs> huh? Why not? I was like 20, and they called, they was like, you're black, you're the black sheep. And I was like, oh. I was so excited. I was so proud. And they was like, that's not a compliment. I was like, it's not a compliment to you. Listen, I may not have known what was going on, but my soul knew. My soul knew that a lot of things, a lot of rules, a lot of expectations that was put on me or tried to be forced on me wasn't my truth, you know? And so 
Yeah, I'm really happy to be an advocate and an ambassador of like, live your truth. Do you be the expression of the divine that you are called here to be? Like, don't let these people bully you into camouflage and don't let these people bully you into what their expectations of what it is to to be human look like. No, but that's a tan- that's a tangent. This is why I got notes, because then I will be like talking about a whole bunch of other stuff. So. My concern is when we have these cultural and societal beliefs and expectations of how things should be, how we have to live, what things should look like. My question is, what happens when these cultural and societal conditionings have negative results and consequences? When the impact of them creates harm? When is inappropriate? What is a Like, what is inappropriate about sex? The discussion of it in and of itself? The exploration of the topic? The exploration of the actual act? And what does our habit of shying away from these conversations or making it seem as if it's a curse word inside of a church say to the younger humans? As they are growing up, if we are trying to shy away from it, if we think it's like off limits topics, how are they supposed to know that there are places and spaces and people who they can go to to ask questions, to confide in, to be curious about? I'm not sure how often these conversations are being held or if they are being had at all. But seeing these two young ladies, both in New Mexico, choose to get rid of their full-term babies, that got my attention. And I want to talk about it because I definitely do think it relates to that comment. Why aren't we talking about a natural part of life? Why are we shying away from it? Why should we be embarrassed? Why should we be ashamed? Why? So, I will be addressing two separate cases, but they both have the same issue. As I said earlier, these are teenage girls or teenage young ladies over the age of 18, pregnant, they gave birth, and tossed their baby in the trash. One baby is still alive, Saul, and the other died. And what blows my mind is that the first young lady that we're about to talk about, she actually gave birth inside of a hospital and chose to throw the baby in the trash. So first, let me set up. The cases, so we are clear who is who and what is what. So the first case we're going to talk about is Alexi Trevino. So I learned about Alexi Trevino. So I tend to watch a lot of interrogation videos on YouTube. I started watching like true crime stuff on YouTube as well. And so the Alexi Trevino case, I actually saw the body cam footage of the situation like a couple of months ago. This happened, her case happened in January. I'm not really sure of this year. So her case happened this year. Yes, I was wanting to watch my words. Her baby, the baby died this year. In January 27th, I want to say 2023. But yeah, January 27th, 2023, the baby, she gave birth and the baby died. So... Now, whether or not she unalived the baby or the baby was already unalived, we will mention that later. But regardless of regardless of what happened, right, regardless of whether the baby was stillborn or not, the reality is she put the baby in the trash. She put the baby in the trash, period, point blank. So anything else, yeah, I, we may not know exact facts, but she put the fucking baby in the trash. That's on period. So I don't know why I just, I got riled up about that because that's all period. So I think part of me is thinking about the countersuit and it's like, not the countersuit, but the civil case. Like y'all got me, y'all gotta be kidding me. But you know what? 
the thing about the law is like people don't always care about the truth. They care about what they can prove. So I'm going to just say that. And trust me, I'm sure it'll come up on another episode where I talk about that um, some other way. But any who let's get back to Alexi Trevino. So as I said, I initially saw this footage on an officer's body cam when they were called to the hospital by the hospital staff after the baby was found hidden in the trash inside the bathroom. Later, I saw it was covered by a true crimes YouTube channel. And then I started seeing updates on the true crime YouTube, not the true crime YouTube, on the true crime Twitter page. It's called... 10 to life is Annie 10 to life. I don't know her last name, but when we go to look up the video, I can, I can check her actual, her name, but anyways, Annie, but you can look up 10 to life on YouTube or on Twitter and you'll find her It's the number 10. So side note, if you're into true crime, Annie 10 to life is really, really good. And she's her coverage is on point. Her personality and everything is just dope. It just really vibes well. Uh, I watch her. She reminds me of a therapist I used to have that I was with for several years. She reminds me so much of my therapist. And so I'm like, I'm really into it. I really dig it. I wonder if she's a Sagittarius. Uh, because. All right. <laughs> Let's move along. Okay. So Alexei Trevino was born in November of 2020 of 2003 um and this incident took place in january 27 on january 27 2023 so she was 19 she is 19 currently we're in september of 2023 just in case like someone's listening to this later on when i'm talking about this this is september 2000 2023 so she's still 19 years old she has been charged with first degree murder child abuse, and tampering with evidence after her newborn son was found dead in a trash by hospital staff. As I mentioned before, it was a hospital in New Mexico. Since then, I feel like she was arrested in May or... Hmm. Either way, the article... I, I'm going to put a link to an article on the show notes page so you'll be able to get more details and you also see the actual arrest warrant everything is there so you can i didn't want to go through all of that because this is not a true crimes page this is not what we do we are making commentary about snippets of things we see on the internet but i did want to give some background to go with you know how i'm feeling and what i'm about to say so that information will be on the on the the website I got y'all. I got y'all. I'm going to use my legal lens to know like what it is I think you would want to know. And I'll put everything there. I'll label it. I got y'all. Show notes page. So her attorney has since filed a countersuit against the hospital, basically blaming the hospital for the death of the baby. That's why earlier I said allegedly murdered right <laughs> but regardless of what like i said earlier like she did what she did regardless of whether the baby was stillborn or died after it was after she gave birth to him putting it in a trash is just unacceptable that's just that's just it's unkind it's unkind it's unkind maybe it was acceptable to her but it was unkind and and it and bigger than that it was not necessary Yet it was a choice. It was an option. And it, it became a choice for her. So there's that. And I get it. She's 19. Sure. And I, I know that every 19-year-old may have a different mentality depending on how they're raised. So I will also keep that in I have also kept that in mind. So with that, like I said, what she did was absolute shit. <laughs> <laughs> like it was it, it didn't have to happen but it did happen and it is what it is i will not entertain this whole civil case situation i understand that attorneys have to do what they have to do their job is to get you out of the situation you're in lessen the blow do whatever they gotta they gotta grab at whatever that's what attorneys do as long as it's within the legal thing and they're not wasting the court's time so do you boo 
So what I will do is focus on the issue at hand, right? And I will be sure to add details to the show notes, like I said before, for y'all to get more information. And we can discuss it all further on the internet streets. <laughs> if y'all would be into that, we can talk about it more on whether it's YouTube, whether it's uh, Instagram, Twitter. I feel like those are great places for this kind of conversation. And so, yes, please feel free to like, Let's talk about it further. We can go deep into the case, but right now, let's focus on content from the internet. I have two clips that I'm going to show you re relating to this case. Both clips are from Annie's 10 to Life page on Twitter. And so, like I said, you can always go there, but the links will also be on the show notes. Let's start with the first clip. For those who are listening audio, clearly, I will try. Later on, as I'm talking about the content, I will mention like what you will see in a video. For those who are watching on YouTube, let's get into it. You know from the hospital staff and body cam footage, when the baby was found, he was described as cold, blue, and purple, with his umbilical cord tattered and wrapped in a plastic bag. Both the ER doctor and the charge nurse described how heartbreaking it was that they weren't even given a chance to save the baby. She said, pick it up. And when I picked it up, it was heavy. I was like, holy you know what I mean? I knew right, I mean, right away I knew. Then I just went straight to trauma too with the whole trash can. And then I went in there to talk to the, to the patient. She said that it just came out of her and she didn't know what to do. Now the next thing, it appears that there has been an intent to file a wrongful death lawsuit. I know that this is a civil matter, but is this being used as part of her defense strategy in general? To say, hey, this girl really didn't know that she was pregnant. She was scared. She lost a son. Look, we have a wrongful death suit. She can't be guilty. That kind of thing. Is it genuine or is it all part of the murder defense strategy? We... <sighs> So just FYI, that voice that you heard talking, that is Annie from 10 to Life. So I want to start there. Uh, like the main voice. Um, you did hear some hospital staff talking. And honestly, when you watch the video, it is sad, you know, because First off, I want to make clear that my heart goes out to every single person who had to come in contact with the deceased baby. She didn't warn them. She didn't tell anyone. They went in there and apparently there was a, a, a bloodbath, right? Like they saw evidence that something was up. And I guess she went to go take the trash bags out. You know, the housekeeping went to go take the trash bags out. And the trash can was heavy because the baby was like hitting under stuff. Um, I can't imagine what that's like to find. I've, I've seen a unalive body before, right? I've seen a deceased body before, fresh um, on a scene before. And that in and of itself is a shock. But imagine this innocent little person just in wrapped up in a trash can no warning you just kind of walk into it so my love goes out to everyone who had to come in contact with the baby i can't imagine how seeing a baby so lifeless affected any of those individuals the reality is that this young girl was in a hospital. She chose to throw the baby in the trash. She locked herself in the bathroom. She wrapped him up, attempting to hide him in the trash. Like she took these steps. And so for those who did not get to watch the video, right? And I know that the wrapping him up and everything wasn't in this video as I mentioned I had saw the body can't foot foot can't uh, foot footage I have seen the body cam footage a couple of months ago I don't remember the exact context of it but I know that she took steps to attempt to hide this and for me that says a lot 
Now, pause. For those who are listening to the audio version, I want to paint a picture of some of what you would have seen had you watched the video. You can see Alexi rushing down the hallway and touching her butt. You know how you hold your ass as if shit is about to come out? That's what she was doing. That's what it looked like she was doing. She was like holding something, trying to keep it from coming down as she was running down the hallway towards the bathroom. Then you see her in the room when she, after the bathroom situation, you see her come in a room and she's on a bed, seeming like she's trying to force herself to cry. Like it's this whole mess. It, you know, it reminds me of, you know how like you get caught, like a child gets caught doing something and they're scared to get in trouble. And so, like, they start to, like, try to force this crying, trying to see, make this innocence of it. Like, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. It's not what happened. Like, that's what that's what her energy was giving uh, as as they were confronting her or quite, whatever, as they were talking to her. And she was back in the bed. Yeah, back in a hospital bed. So that's what it was giving. Um, again, this is a short clip. Y'all can watch uh, the longer version of the body cam video. Like, it's just... Because you also get to hear them talk to the actual housekeeping person who found the baby. Like, imagine how shook up anybody would be to see something like that. Like, yeah, she was in a bathroom for a long time and all these things, but what the fuck? What? You're in a hospital. Let's keep talking about this. Let me, let me, let me go through, right? For those who haven't watched the first episode yet, I, I write notes that try to help me stay on topic. But even then, you know, like after you say something, it hits you like, what the, you know, you still got more, more it's processing for you. And that's basically what's happening for me. So it truly is sad. And I was, I am wondering like, what the F was she thinking, right? Like, what kind of fear was this? What was she actually scared of? At that point, the baby was already here. What were you afraid of? And whatever you were afraid of, could it not have been dealt with? I know it's easy for me not to understand because I wasn't in her body. I have no idea what sensations were coming out for her and what kind of emotional regulating regulating techniques she has. Like, I get that. I don't know that, right? So, sure, whatever. But what the fuck? How could someone do that and go back into the room and expect that no one would know? What was the plan? And I get that when we're in a panic, we do silly things, right? We're not thinking about the overall consequences. We're just trying to get out of that very panicky moment as safe as possible. But what was the plan? Did she not come to her senses by the time she got in, back in a room with her mom? Because her mom was in a room. Did she think that they wouldn't notice? Let's be clear. When she was in that bathroom, they kept knocking on the door. They were checking in on her. So clearly somebody was close by. She knew somebody was close by. They would know something was up. You are the last person to come out the bathroom. They are literally knocking on the bathroom door trying to get you out. What? Who, like, you don't think they're going to check the bathroom if you've taken, like, so long in there? And apparently, like, there was blood around the bathroom. So, oh, girl, the plan, what, what was it? I guess I, 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 I don't understand. I don't get it. And it doesn't mean, just because I don't get it, it doesn't mean anything, right? It just means I don't get it. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But I'm curious. And just so you all know about me, and I, I, I feel like this just re- reflects my values, but I think lying is usually one of the silliest things people do. It just, lying very rarely makes any sense to me. And here are some reasons why. One, people lie about things that can be verified. (laughs) Like, 
And that to me is a waste of time. Like, just get ahead of it. Like, why are you putting people through circles? Like, what is the plan in between you lying and the truth coming out? What is the plan? <laughs> What's the plan between you lying and the truth coming out? What's the purpose of the in between time? And then you lie about things that someone else knows it. And then people who lie about things that someone else knows the truth about, which really always blows my mind. Like, people who couldn't make. Right. I said I watch a lot of interrogations. So people who commit crimes when other people know about the crime that they committed to me doesn't make sense. Because you're expecting someone to hold on to a lie for you when no one is obligated to hold your lies for you. So at any moment, the person who knows can just tell the truth about what actually happened. So why not get ahead, again, why not get ahead of it and just do it yourself, telling yourself. I used to always say that, not about lying, but like growing up, I used to be like, if I ever run for office, I would do a tell-all book first. And the reason why I would be do a tell-all book, because I wouldn't even want to have to deal with things coming out. I'd rather just get ahead of it. Anything embarrassing, I'd rather just get ahead of it. That way, nobody got no ammunition. I said everything. So people going to even ride with me or they not. It is what it is. Because like that's just how the world that's how the world has shown me to work. And time and time again, human beings has constantly showed me that like as long as someone else knows the secret, there's a chance that it could come out. So what is the point? What's the point? And then people get mad at the person for telling on them. And it's like, why do you think they're obligated to hold your your lie? Why? I know this is like off the subject, but I'm just trying to tell y'all like why lying doesn't make sense to me. The third reason why lying doesn't make sense to me is that life just has a way of shining a light on the truth. And then it tends to make things a lot more messier than they need it to be. And I feel like this situation is an example of just that. Like, what was the point of the lying? <clears throat> you are already at the hospital. How is killing the baby, right? Or in this case, the assumption is from old girl's point of view that it was stillborn. It it was doing nothing. It did nothing. What was what was the point then in hiding it? If it did nothing, if it wasn't alive, why hide it? You didn't do anything. So why are you hiding it? Why not ask for help? How is killing the baby or not asking for help a better or best option than disappointing your parents? Or maybe it's not about a best or better option, more about what's convenient. Maybe she was just in a moment, going with the flow and willing to take it as far as she could. Maybe she did think there was a chance she would get away with it. All of those things are possible. You know, I I think about people, like right now I'm thinking about people who put cops on high-speed chases. In California, it happens all the time. People that put cops on high-speed chases, more times than not, they're going to get caught. But they are willing to risk that small percentage that they won't get caught. So was that one of those situations where it's like, yeah, I might get caught, but let's see if I won't get caught. Let me let me go with it until I can't. So that's why I'm like, is that what was happening? I don't know. But it just seems really silly to lie about something that clearly the truth would come out. And girl, on top of that. You're denying you are having sex while a whole human is growing inside of you? Y'all, family, friends, everything. Please help me consider some plausible perspectives. Because maybe my brain just doesn't go there. Maybe my brain it hasn't expanded to that capacity to see some other sides of what else was possible. Has someone else done something like this and gotten away with it like please I, like I, I I don't get it I don't I, I have no idea what could possibly have been the goal
And I think at the end of the day, I, I, I'm absolutely okay with questions not being answered. I will say that, right? Like, you know, some some questions will never get answered. Because at the end of the day, only her and God knows what happens. She was the only one in that bathroom. So whatever her perspective of what was happening, it's her perspective. And we we may never know the truth. No one may ever know the truth. Because at the end of the day, it's always going to be her perspective of what was happening. And so for the most part, it's between... Her and science about whether or not, first of all, whether or not baby boy was alive when he came, when, when he, when he was birthed and yeah, it's between, I guess at this point it's between her and science, her word and science. So I do want to show this other clip and this one, this clip does mention like the whole wrongful death lawsuit. And so you'll get to hear her, her attorney. Mm. You get to hear her turn his and his energy for the for those who's into injury, his energy is very interesting. So I only heard it through this clip, but let's get into it. New Mexico, who put her baby in the hospital trash can after claiming that she was a virgin. Alexi had been arrested and was let out on bail. We discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. I'm the charge nurse here. Do you guys have any questions for me? Like how big is the baby? It's full term. What? Nine months? Nothing was crying. A few months later, detectives were trying to reach Alexi on April 26th. What is she under arrest for? Tampering with evidence yeah. at the hospital? She's being arrested for murder. No medications, anything you need to take while you're in there. She did not know she was pregnant until she uh, had the baby at uh, 139, 140 in the bathroom. We also know that uh, they continue to give not only her morphine, but five other different drugs, four of which are contraindicated for birth. For a few So basically her attorney's perspective is that basically they, I guess they induced labor and they, they were negligent in the way that they dealt with the whole situation. So, you know, again, I, let's keep talking some more and I will give the, the thing about that. So first off, old girl said nothing was crying. Nothing was crying. The baby was not crying, she said, but she said nothing was crying. Her counsel's position is that the baby was born dead. They are also saying that she did not know she was pregnant until she gave birth. So, we're going to get back to all that, but let's just highlight those things. Now, I told y'all, I did a little I I did a little Google for y'all, just a little bit. And there's this Fox News article that I got some a little extra information from, and specifically, this is a quote from her attorney that I want to share because his whole position is that people are talking about things that they don't know and blah, 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 and like, whatever. This is the quote. <clears throat> the baby never cried. The baby never breathed. The baby never moved his eyelids. The baby never showed signs of life. She didn't know what to do. That's the story. That's this case. A little different than 17,000 at the time of the interview. Idiots. He's calling these people who signed this petition. Idiots. Trying to keep her out of school. Because basically this young lady was at a university and the students weren't having it. The students weren't having it. They weren't having it. So basically they signed this petition to keep her out of school. And like her attorney responded with this. Again, the link to the article where this is part of will be on the show notes page of the website. <sighs> okay. So now if even if all this is true, right? The baby never cried. The baby never breathed. There was no life. That's their responsibility to like poke holes in the prosecutor's case as far as the criminal case goes. And the only thing they're poking holes in is the idea that she did not murder the kid. She did not murder this baby boy. That's the only thing that they are, I guess, focusing on is that she did not murder this baby boy. That it was already, when it was born, it was born, stillborn. 
Now, regardless of what, there will be repercussions or there should be repercussions for her actions. And I want to be careful with should because I do know that favor ain't fair. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's up to God. And I trust that whatever God's spirit believes is the correct response to this, it shall be. And reality is no one else was there besides her and the baby. So it's her word and science that gets to tell the story. From my perspective, she could have asked for help. Regardless of the situation, even if the baby was born stillborn, asking for help would have changed this whole entire situation. And even after giving birth, she does not appear to have gone into the room to tell her mom or the staff. And as I said earlier, people were knocking on the door. When you see, when or if you see the body cam footage, the nurses are te- are saying that they were ch- they were at- they were knocking on the door and they were trying to say, "Do you need anything? Are you okay?" So people were going to the door, checking in on her, wondering if she's okay. Each of those times were opportunities to ask for help. Each of those times was an opportunity for her to ask for help. Opportunities to let someone know what was going on. You didn't know what to do, but there's like 500 people walking around this place that is qualified. Qualified. You talking about this baby. You you are saying baby boy was not breathing. It was he was not it was nothing. Right? What she say? What she say? Nothing was crying. That's what you said, right? Like, nothing was crying. So, you had opportunities to get help. Get him help. And even if it wasn't possible, at least you could have said you tried. Even if he was stillborn, at least you tried. But that's not what happened. What happened was, old girl wrapped the baby up, tried to hide him. From getting help, from getting support, from being treated, from being handled properly, from his body being handled properly. This is a human being we're talking about. Regardless of how you feel, he is a he is an earth now. Whether you knew you were pregnant or not, I feel like 19 year old is enough to know that a newborn is a human. 19 years old is old enough to know that we can't just hurt even little people and think that we can just discard them because they're not breathing. I think now so far, at least with her so far, I have not heard anything about her mental status. No one has tried to bring up that she was struggling with mental health issues from what I know. Right? Like I have not been truly following this case down to a T uh, I do try to be mindful of what I take in as far as like the news because this shit is sad. And it's like, for me, I know that I will never know the full truth. And so it's just like, I don't even want to continue that as rabbit hole of speculations. So, yeah. Yeah, there's so much we don't know. But like at the end of the day, like just for surface level things that I'm talking about that I'm responding to is just like, what was the point? Even if you were scared, even if you didn't know what you what to do, right? Her attorney says she didn't know what to do. And I'm saying she was in a hospital with at least 50 staff members who knew what to do, who were qualified to help her. And yet she chose not to seek assistance. That was a choice. Each time they knocked on a door, she made a choice. She made a choice. I have never been pregnant or given birth. But I don't doubt that babies can be born quiet. And then the nurses have to do something to help them maybe clear their lungs or clear their throats or clear some part of their body or whatever else, you know, so like they can clear up their patches way so they can breathe on their own. I have no doubt that that is a thing. But again, no one else was there. So the actual situation 
we don't know what the truth of it is. At least we don't know yet. I'm sure when the court case actually, you know, when it goes to court, we will hear more more information that wasn't re- that wasn't avail that hasn't been available yet. But her saying that it wasn't nothing was crying just because the baby wasn't crying that doesn't say anything right because you didn't get it you didn't get the baby boy any help he who knows what could have happened had a nurse worked on him had a doctor seen him who knows like you are not qualified clearly quote unquote you didn't even know you were pregnant so you clearly are not qualified and i guess i have heard stories of people not knowing they're pregnant I don't know the extent of that. I don't know the circumstances. I don't know the situation. So I'm not even going there. I ain't going there. Like I said, I ain't never been pregnant. Even if I have, I'm not her. So I ain't going there. That's for sure. And I also don't believe it. So there's that. At the end of the day, Alexi made a choice and kept making them. And now she's here. Our choices have consequences. And also, like I said, I personally, I don't know. I don't believe that she didn't know. Whether she knew the day before, whether she knew two days before, whether she knew a week before. I don't doubt she knew prior to actually going to that bathroom and the baby coming out. And apparently people knew she was pregnant at school. She was a cheerleader or something. Because I think at the time she was still in high school. Because I remember when she was trying to go to prom, but they were not having it. Though The students were like, they were not having it. The high school students weren't having it. So I do feel like there's some there's some more to that. And I'm sure it's going to come out in the cases and, and during the, the trial. So apparently people knew that she was pregnant and she knew, despite her saying she didn't know. It's all just mind blowing to me, like. And I would love to know, like, your perspective on this and your thoughts on it. And, you know, I think that what I love and I think what's so important for me about this podcast is that everyone might have a unique and inter- a different perspective. And in these perspectives, we get to consider other possibilities. You know, I know that there's some things I don't know. And so when I give my opinion or I give my perspective on something, it's limited to what I know, what I'm aware of, where, what I'm aware of. But that doesn't mean that something that I never heard of can't be possible, right? you know? And so I really do would love to continue this conversation. I would love to hear your perspectives. I would love to hear like, maybe you know about someone who had a similar situation where they didn't know they were pregnant until like they gave birth, you know? I don't know. I'm someone who is really like, mindful of my body you know I really do pay attention I can tell when something is changing usually in my body and so I have a different approach to all this but I also can say when I was 19 20 I had a lot of trauma in my body and so I I didn't have a connection with my body like I have now so I don't know this young lady's circumstances and yet and still I still don't believe she did not know and I think too I don't think she didn't know and I don't believe it because the students, some of the students that came forward seem to seem to have known. And I guess that's the part that got me. So I'll be curious about what her, what the baby father, who she's actually in a relationship with, was saying, you know, what he knew or what they knew or if they even thought it was possible. So now there is another case in New Mexico. This one actually happened before Alexi's situation. And... Her mom, Alexi's mom, and, and like when the nurses first, when you watch the body cam video, when the nurses first come in and mention the whole, because I really, I believe what happened was the, the, the nurses and everyone waited till the police came to approach her. Like when you see, I guess like when the female nurse comes in or doctor or whatever it was, she came in with the officers. And so like, that's the part of the body cam you get to see. And so with that being said, Alexi's mom ends up making mention, like, you see what happened to girls that, da, 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 that this happens to. And so this is the case that happens before Alexi's situation. Remember, Alexi's situation just happened 
like the baby baby boy just died earlier this year january 27th this is another case that happened in new mexico and it's already been tried in court uh i believe it's currently going through appeal right now so alexis avila is this 19 year old young lady from new mexico who was found, she's already been found guilty. She was found guilty in May 2023. So she's been found guilty of abuse of a child resulting in great bodily harm. After being accused of throwing her baby in a dumpster in 2002. So as I just said, she was sentenced in May. So her sentencing was a mandatory 19 year, 18 years in prison for tossing her newborn son into a trash dumpster. Behind the shopping center. Uh, but the district judge cited like her mental health concerns and the, the, her age and suspended two of the years. So basically, she was sentenced to serve six, 16 years. I initially heard of this case because I saw the interrogation of Alexis. There was video footage of her tossing the baby into the dumpster and driving off. Later, there are individuals who I don't know if they were dumpster diving or if we want to call this dumpster shopping, uh, but they found the baby. They heard the baby crying. They found the baby and they called 911 and they kept the baby warm and took care of the baby. I believe it was two men and a woman and a, the, the, the woman that was with them basically like, you know, they wrapped the baby up. They kept the baby warm until the 911 came. And so let's let's uh, listen to that video, actually. So this video as well is from Tense to Life Twitter page. Yo, Tense to Life, come through. Hello, 911. Yes, uh, we just found a baby in the trash behind the, the what is it? Uh, damn, I can't think straight. Uh, fuck. We're looking for somebody that dumped a black trash bag in your dumpster. That you, you were pregnant, okay? Right. right I, I, I found that out yesterday. You found that out yesterday? Yesterday. Okay. It, it came out and I thought it was poop and then it, it, it Okay. So you were where? And you're at your house? Yeah, I was okay. by myself. You were by yourself? Yes. Okay. I, mean, I mean, that's... That's not normal, right? Right. Okay, what happened after that? I, I was in a panic. I didn't know what to do. Okay. I was scared. Okay. I don't remember. I just don't remember. No, I don't remember. Yes, because I don't remember. No, I'm aware of. So, she was scared. She was alone. She didn't know what to do. She didn't know what to do. <clears throat> so Alexis apparently didn't know until the very, very close to her giving birth that she was pregnant. Apparently, I think her story was the day before she went to the doctor and they told her she was pregnant. I guess they didn't tell her when, not when, I guess they didn't tell her how far along she was and blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying blah, 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 because clearly, y'all know, I don't believe the story. Like, I, I said that early. I don't believe either one of them did it. Even one of these young ladies didn't know they were pregnant. Now, whether or not they wanted to ignore it, whether or not they wanted to act like it wasn't happening, right, whatever. That doesn't change the fact that it is happening. It was happening. And y'all brought full baby to full term. It is what, like, you, you, the baby is full term. And that video, now, if you watch... <laughs> Now, if you watch that interrogation video with Alexis, and I think she wanted, she asked if, she, basically they told her that the baby was alive, and I think she basically would say that she could take it now, and it was like, what? Burr? But, you know, again, I don't know what goes through people's head or what was going through their mind or what what the whole processing is. I'm hoping that we're going to talk it through and I will get some new insight, maybe not answers or maybe not it's indefinite, but you know, some other perspectives. So apparently she was scared and her solution was to get rid of the baby. There's also mention of her living with an experience since the symptoms of bipolar disorder and that she was dissociated and detached from her feelings. 
which I can understand the disassociated part. All right. But I want to point something out. New Mexico has a safe haven law. For those not familiar with a safe haven law, it basically allows parents to leave a a baby who's younger than 90 days at a safe location without criminal consequences. And because I, I got your back, I Googled it. Right. Just to see like how long because, again, this happened in 2002. Like maybe the safe haven law didn't come into practice until after the situation. No. This safe haven law has been in effect until since 2013. And it has all basically the whole purpose of it, even back then, was to protect individuals who drop off infants who are 90 days or younger at any health facility, which includes a hospital, a police station or firefighter station. So there were options for these young ladies and there were choices. Clearly, I do not know what these young ladies knew or what they did not know. Only they know the truth and then they are the ones who have to live with it. They have to live with that knowing. They have to live with their their choices. They have to live with the consequences. That's on them. But what these two cases say to me is that we have a problem. And in my opinion, it's a societal issue. Because lying about sex for what? And it's not like it just happens in New Mexico, right? Just like that post mentioned, right? Like, why can't we casually talk about sex? Why should we be embarrassed or ashamed? And I only know this because I've had people try to shame me when I openly and liberally talk about sex. I've had people try to tell me how I should be as a lady. Like, what? You don't determine what my womanhood looks like. You don't determine that. That is a choice I get to make. Excuse me? But because society has given so many people this belief that they get to dictate what it looks like or how we must behave or how we must be in in order to be qualified as a worthy, I guess, or valuable woman or a worthy woman, we must behave a certain way. Other people have decided that they get to dictate how we go about expressing ourselves, how we go about our sexual relations, how we go about dressing, how we go about speaking, how we go about being. In order to tell us whether or not we qualify as this woman. So lying about sex, why? Not feeling comfortable or feeling able to confide in family or friends about what is happening or has happened? That's a little scary. I can't imagine what these young ladies were going through. But our life reflects a combination of our decisions. And here, these young ladies made theirs. When I was a young girl, and I want to say I was about probably seven, between seven and nine. I definitely wasn't 10. So between seven or nine, I remember one of our family friends daughter got in trouble because and she was like a teenager because she threw her baby out the bathroom window after she gave birth to it yeah she threw her baby out the bathroom window I will I remember that like it was all it was over the news and all this other stuff but like there was consequences to that she ended up going away for years I had seen her since, but she went away for a good, a very long time because there are consequences to our actions, even ones that was done out of fear. But what happens when we shame young girls or women generally about sex instead of educating them, instead of creating an openness for ongoing discussion? I'll be honest, I was 15 years old when I decided to have sex with my boyfriend. 
at the time. And I <laughs> used to say that my mother tricked me into confessing that I was sexually active. And she did that by making me feel comfortable. She asked me the question and then she's like, tell me, I won't get mad. Very like, very relaxed and chill. Mind you, my mom is, my mom got skills with manipulating, okay? And she uses it well. And so in this case, like she was very calm about it. She was very chill. It was a very relaxed environment. She was like, I ain't gonna get mad. You ain't gonna get in trouble. I'm like, tell me, girl, let me know, right? Like, and so I ended up telling her. I ended up being honest. And again, right, I, I mentioned earlier, I think lying is like, I think even at that age, I tried to, I I would not lie. Like, it would be rough for me to lie. Not, I want to say I never lied before because I have lied. I've definitely lied before. Uh, but it wasn't a habit of mine. It wasn't something I was really into because I don't see, I even back then, I don't see the point in it when the truth can come out. I feel like as long as someone else knows is a chance it will come out. And I'm one of those people, like, I'd rather get ahead of it. Because I would never want nobody to have anything hanging over my head that they could blackmail me with. Not saying somebody would, but, like, that's the way I think. And I've thought that for a long time. Like, nah, I'm getting ahead of this. I'm, I'm going to tell on myself. Like, I'm good. I'm telling on myself. So... When my mom found out, I didn't get in trouble. My mom would make comments here and there about having sex and about the possibility of getting pregnant, about me being a little fast ass and all this stuff. Um, she would probably even make threats like, oh, if you come in here pregnant, da 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 I don't ever think she said, if you come in here pregnant, like, you, you can't stay here. I don't think that ever came. Though I used to hear other people, parents say that. I don't think my mom has ever said that to me. But either way. When I did tell her, it wasn't, I do remember her, like, not being as cool as she made it seem she was going to be. But at the end of the day, like, nothing really happened to me. I wasn't punished. Like, it, it wasn't made a big deal. I don't think she went around telling anybody in the family. Like, I don't remember it being a big deal. I remember it being like, oh, shit, she tricked me, and that was it. I went on with my life. I, I was with my boyfriend all through high school. Like, it was like, whatever. Like, not, I don't remember it ever coming back up again. Um, and my mom was also, she, she reminded me of someone who was very sexually liberated, right? She was someone who walked around the house in her bra and panties. Uh, I remember seeing like, I'm telling all her business, but y'all don't know her. <laughs> um, you know, she, she had fancy panties and stuff like that. Like, you know, she was about her business. She, she, she was a, a free woman, you know, she was, she was free. And so my home wasn't really a place where I personally felt like I couldn't discuss those things. I didn't, but maybe I could have. Like, I never really tried. But I never I never felt like in my home was a shameful place about sex. The main thing was always, like, I just remember people talking about pregnancy. That seemed to be everybody's concern. Not, not about STDs or anything else. It was always pregnancy. And even now, I'm thinking, like, like I said earlier, when my family member had mentioned, like, being worried about, her daughter getting pregnant, I'm just like, that's so surface level. Like, is it because there's evidence that she's having sex? And like, maybe that say something about your motherhood that you failed? Like, I don't understand the the big deal about, I don't know. Again, right, I ain't got kids, so maybe I would never understand until I have kids. But either way, I just think that being afraid that your child's going to get pregnant when you can't control them having sex, you can't control them having a partner, you can't control that stuff, only but so much because they do have to go to school. They could cut school. It, it only takes, what, a minute to get pregnant? Probably less than that. Like, it don't take a lot to get pregnant. So that can just happen. So instead of being afraid of it, like, why not educate them? Why not prepare them? Why not tell them? You know, why not have an open dialogue about it? Like, it, it just doesn't make sense to me for you to try to suppress a child or suppress a young woman by keeping knowledge away from them, by keeping information away from them, by telling them the conversation is not acceptable. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. And even, like, back when I was a teenager, I remember, like, the people my age, like, my age group, my homegirls, my friends, they were more concerned about losing their virginity and then the guys dumping them or having sex and the guys dumping them than anything else. That seemed to be everybody concerned. And even then, I used to go with my friends to Planned Parenthood. We all were able to go to the doctors by ourselves and get on birth control. Like, all of that was available and we all knew it. So we knew things. We knew that there were resources. 
And so, like, that's something I think about as well, right? The culture and the environment that these ladies were raised in. You know, what was it like? I grew up in New York City. This is a whole different ball game. So I'm, like, curious about, like, did their parents threaten them? Were they told that, you know, that certain things are just not acceptable, that as a woman, she has to be a certain way, or as a young lady, until she get married, that she shouldn't, like, what? Like, what were the standards? What were the values? What were the beliefs regarding sex, regarding being a woman, regarding whatever, whatever the standards were? Maybe it had nothing to do with being a woman. Maybe it was just like you were too young. Maybe it was just an age thing. Or maybe it was like you need to, uh, you know, maybe her mom was a single mom. Like, I don't know. Like, what? But I'm curious. Like, what is the deal? Like, did they feel uncomfortable discussing sex in their home with their parents did they have somebody at school that they can talk to that they felt comfortable talking with did their parents ever invite a conversation about sex about protection about sexually transmitted diseases about the consequences of having sex about options definitely about options whether they are or are not sexually active, right? I believe that education is important. I didn't truly understand my reproductive cycle until I was well into my adult life. And to be honest, that's pretty freaking sad. Like, I didn't even under... Listen, it was sad. Like, when I realized what I didn't know, I was like, what is life? What is life? What is life? So it's like, I have a million questions, like, more education, please. Like, instead of just telling people you don't want to get pregnant, you can get pregnant. Like, that's not enough. Like, let's have a more deep conversation. Let's talk about sexual pleasure. Let's talk about masturbation. Let's talk about these things. Let's talk about getting comfortable with your own body. Let's talk about feeling safe in your body. Let's talk about what happens if if sex is not comfortable, if you if something feels wrong, if you feel violated, what does that mean? Let's talk about it. Why aren't like are these conversations being had? They are important, important in conversations for men, for women, for boys, girls, whatever, everything in between. They are important conversations. Are they being had? <sighs> And so next to curiosity is how can we change any of this, right? Like the lack of open conversations. How can we create more safe spaces to discuss this? How can we reduce the fear that conversation leads to people wanting to experiment? You know, like a lot of times, even when it comes to sexuality, people don't want to have conversations or people don't want it seen in their face because it might influence something. Well, clearly clearly with or without the open conversation people are doing what they want with or without the open conversation people are having sex so why not get ahead of it why not educate them why not give them the resources why not create safe spaces for them why not give them mentors that they can go and talk to about this why not or i mean because if the parent ain't it have another adult that they can trust and that they can lean on that you also as a parent feel safe and comfortable enough for your child to have a conversation like that with so that they can have the support that they need. How can we be there for them? How can we help them? How can we support them? How can we make sure that they have what they need to make the best choices for themselves and to protect themselves and take care of themselves and whatever choice they make? So I have empathy for these young ladies. I really do. I'm not sure it was scary. I am pretty sure it was scary and overwhelming to give birth. Uh, maybe thoughts were running rampant or maybe they were in shock and disassociated from the experience. And so they weren't even emotionally present. I don't know. There's parts of my life where I can tell you straight up and down that I don't remember. Because those were probably just some very hard times where my body dis disconnected, dissociated, and it and it did what it and my soul and my spirit and my body and everything, my consciousness, like it did what it needed to do to keep me safe and protected. 
So I don't doubt that any of that is possible. But I do hope that these young ladies get the help and support they need. I have had several experiences in my life when I felt like I got a second chance. So I do believe that we always get what we need for our soul's expansion and evolution and life purpose. And I trust that they will receive whatever it is they need. As I said earlier, that's between them and God or whatever they believe in source or whatever they believe, whatever. They, basically, I'm saying from my perspective, that's between them and God. Okay, that's between them and source. <clears throat> I pray that they get whatever they need. And that as a collective, that this will awaken what we need for our evolution as well. So since the Alexis situation happened, which is the one that took place in 2022, where she was sentenced this year, they have changed the, the uh, safe haven situation. They have made more spaces available for people to drop off babies. They have done that, right? So these cases, and the fact that they had another one right after, because that's pretty quick. Like, it was probably the end of 2022 because it was cold. And then um, then Alexa's situation happened in January. So that's just the beginning of this year. So that's, I don't know. And as I said before, I believe that they knew before the baby came. Uh, whether they tried to convince themselves it wasn't happening or not, I think they knew or had an idea. And even if they did not know, once the baby was here, it was what it was. Because both of these young ladies were consenting to sex. As far as, like, it appears. They both, both of them knew who the father was. Both of them knew... Both of them had said, because Alexis during her, Alexis during her interrogation, because she had an interrogation, during her interrogation, they, she mentions the baby father. I, I don't remember if she said, like, she, I know for a couple of weeks or a couple of days, she just didn't go to school. Like, basically, she was staying away from everybody, and then she ended up having a baby by herself at home while nobody was there. And I know that uh, Alexi was in a relationship with the baby father. Like, they were together. Their families knew each other, apparently. Blah, blah, blah. Like, but that was a whole situation. Like, they were together. So, these were young ladies that were choosing to have sex, was having sex with these with their partners or whatever the situation was. And I always say this to people, and I say this to myself, too. As long as you're having sex, there's a possibility of pregnancy. You can be like, oh, I was on birth control, this... As long as you're having sex, there's a possibility of pregnancy. Then birth control fails, condoms fail. So as long as you have sex, there is a possibility of a baby. So, yep, there's that. So like I said, I do believe that they both knew. Once the baby was here, it was what it was. As far as, like I said, Alexis' baby, the second story I told you about, the one that happened in 20, 2022 where she's already been charged uh, and she's currently serving time, that baby did survive and that baby is with, the baby name is Soul and Soul is with his family, I believe, is with the paternal family, the paternal, yeah, the paternal side of his family. And so, you know, he is uh, growing well uh, from what they said. And I, of course, like the first couple of hours of his his life was traumatic as shit. And so I do want to say this, and I want to put this out there into the universe and for us all to keep this in mind. As much as that baby was just an infant and a newborn, and maybe he won't remember what happened, right? The reality of it is, is that the body keeps score. That trauma or the memories of the experience may be in that baby's cells, the body cells. Like the body does keep score. So may it may be later, if not already, it that that trauma, that experience can be expressing itself. And we have no idea what that might look like. So it's kind of shit. It's kind of shit 
And my heart aches for him. And I, I, I pray for him and I pray for the family. And I know that he is indeed a fucking gift. I have no doubt that that baby is a gift on earth. And I pray that soul is just grows up to just be amazing and loving and kind and just something so fucking special that we that the world can't help but love on him even more. That he gets even a more of abundance of love, even more of abundance of protection, even a more of abundance of care. Uh, and I and I believe we all deserve that. But I wanna I wanna send that specifically to soul. Because what a fucking way to start. What a way to start. What a way. What a way to start. What a way to stay strong. Like his soul was like, I'm here. I'm here and I'm staying here. And the right people, the the the, the people who found him. Didn't run away. They didn't shy away. Even if they knew they wasn't supposed to be back there in that garbage. They called 911. So we give thanks for that. They wasn't worried about getting in trouble. And they didn't They didn't lie and say why they were back there. They spoke up. They was concerned. And they called 911. And because of that, they came on time. That baby was cold. It was cold outside. What was she expecting was going to happen to that baby? Y'all, if y'all go and watch the video, please come back and let me know your thoughts. Because y'all know I'm going to put the link. I'm going to put the link on the show notes. So y'all please come back and let me know your thoughts because that was the one. But friends... <clears throat> What are your thoughts? Like I said, what are your thoughts? What do y'all think about all of this? I know that this is a layered issue and each community may have a different reaction to it. And I would love to hear them all. I would love to uh, look into your world, into your reality. In my reality, it wasn't uncommon for young girls to get pregnant and have children or to even have abortions that their parents didn't know about. So maybe I don't see the big deal about being pregnant. And I do believe people have options and they should be shameless in utilizing them. I spent most of my childhood in foster care. I am grateful that I was able to be placed in a home eventually where I felt like I was a child of my foster mom. I felt safe. I felt like I was cared for. And in the meantime, my mom was able to figure herself out. I pray that people don't feel guilty if they realize that being a parent isn't for them. I used to say that the world is so unforgiving to parents and specifically to mothers because I believe that there's this expectation of they are no longer human and therefore they need to be able to tolerate whatever comes their way. They need to be able to stay strong, to not cry, to not complain, that they have to just keep going and suck it up because they chose to bring these kids into the world. I personally don't have that point of view. And that's because of my own upbringing. That was because of what I've experienced and what I've seen. I tend to be a lot more empathetic and sympathetic because I know and I truly do believe that my mom was doing the best she could. And it hurts my heart that she couldn't just ask for help. It hurts my heart that she had to pretend. It hurts my heart that she couldn't just break down and people could be compassionate about it. So I empathize with people who give birth to children and don't feel a bond with them or get overwhelmed by the responsibility. And I pray that they find outlets where they can speak up and ask for help and support. I say this now and I've said it before. Me and my mom, for me, we've never had a mother-daughter bond. I have never felt, I've never felt like she was a parent to me. I've always seen her as a sibling. Like I had this energy with her where we were just cool. I don't know what a mother-daughter bond probably supposed to feel like or what people think it feels like, but whatever it is, I didn't feel that with her. And I remember asking my dad, like, did mom ever bond with me? Like our energy is just like, we cool. That's my homie. Like I, I rocks with her. 
But I remember also being in therapy where I was, they was, they was keeping me in where they were supporting like this victim mentality where like somehow my mom was wrong because of what I was experiencing. Like, oh, it should have been this way. It should have been that way. But like, really should it have? Because she's still human. You know, she has trauma too that she hasn't dealt with. What if really she is doing the best she could and that's all she got? What if she's just choosing not to fake the funk and she's like, I don't F with old girl like that. And like, yeah, she's my daughter and I love her, but I ain't really feeling her like that. Like, what is so wrong about that? What is so wrong about being honest? Because I'd rather you be honest and be with your truth with me than resent me and treat me bad and treat me mean and abuse me because you're mad that I exist. You know, and so I know that that's like a whole other tangent, but it's just like there, these are these these choices and these beliefs we have as a society and these expectations we create and these societal norms that we build that we all agree to because that's the issue. We are agreeing to it and that's what makes it real. It's only our agreeance of it that makes it real. It's only us pouring energy in it that makes it real, that amplifies it, that makes it feel real. When none of this is real, there's nothing wrong with talking about sex. There's nothing wrong with being liberated in your sexual identity. None of that is wrong. It's only wrong to certain individuals that say it's wrong. But if you are okay with it within yourself, then that is it. But the world doesn't support that all the way, right? There's not a lot of places that's supporting that. And so here, of course, at so I came across this post when you got your homegirl Charlie here, your sister here. I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to support you living in your truth, even if it's not my truth, even if it's not my ministry. So, yeah, yeah I'm, that's OK. That's what came through. And so I'm giving that to y'all so listen being human is messy business i read that recently and i was like yes it is messy business i'm happy to be here but it's messy business and that's why i come to peace with my me with the mess because i'm like listen i'm doing the best i can and I'm making adjustments as I go and I'm unlearning some stuff and I'm questioning some things and I'm recognizing that some of these rules, regulation and expectations just aren't aligning with me. And not only do they not align with me, they are causing harm to our communities. And so when I see it, I want to fly. I want to flash a light on it right now. I'm flashing light on. We need to talk about sex. We need to casually talk about sex. The same way, well, I guess I was about to say the same way y'all want to talk about finances, but apparently we don't be wanting to talk about finances like that either. So I don't know, but we need to casually talk about sex. Okay. But I want to know your thoughts, fam. Like, let me know what your thoughts on this topic is. If you want to come on the podcast and discuss it further, feel free to reach out to me because I'd love to explore deeper because I think even what I've said for the most part is like pretty surface level because listen, there's a lot to unpack, but at least I feel like we can get the conversation started. And then maybe one of y'all know something deeper. Like there's probably some sexual educators out here that probably know some things that did some studying that have experimented out in the world and have seen how these things show up within our bodies, how we express it within energy. And that you know, can can tell us some things that we don't we haven't we don't know or we haven't explored. And so I would love to hear from you all, whatever it is that you want to share, whatever it is that you want to bring to the table. I'm open to it. So whether you want to link up on the, so, the social media streets, TikTok, Twitter and Instagram is at now Charlie, Charlie with two eyes and. Yeah, and y'all already know on YouTube, please hit me up, like leave a comment and let's and I'm a I'ma come through and message y'all and we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna keep that conversation going. So like I said, I think that this maybe I don't know how true this is, but maybe this is the start of this conversation is surface level for me. But hopefully my talking about it will open up space for more clarity and guidance surrounding it to come to me. I do know that when I when I talk to God and when I talk to spirit, uh, I call God spirit. So I'm going to just say that because I say God in hopes that listen, I'm going to call I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say spirit of source. But when I talk about this, I, I trust that spirit will hear me and respond with guidance for me. If it's meant for me to have 
deeper understanding that they will provide me with it in order for me to do whatever it is I'm being called to do. So I do thank you all for listening and sticking with me through this topic. I hope that, you know, I know that a lot of it was serious, but, you know, I got to laugh. I got to joke. I I don't really take life too serious. Uh, Shit happens. And I got to laugh. I got to keep laughing to keep from crying sometimes because I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, And at the same time, I do trust that there's always a bigger purpose. I trust that nothing is ever wasted. Everything has a purpose in this world. Uh, That's just me. That's how I roll. So with that being said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am so looking forward to further conversations with you all. Uh, Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and consider following us on the YouTube as well. Um, As we know, this is also a video podcast. So check us out on YouTube. And you know, on YouTube, we can leave comments. We can talk to each other. We can chat it up. And eventually when we get enough followers, we can go live. We can have these live conversations. And so we can do the podcast live too and so like listen there's so many possibilities once we we link up once we link up so just like let me know please rate the podcast let us know your thoughts help the people learn about the podcast and that we exist i want to continue this conversation as i said before i will be posing questions on different platforms every time we drop an episode so come through come through I can't say I come through. I love like finding random melodies or songs to go with stuff, but whew, as we get to know each other, you will see. Okay, and this is episode two, and guess what? Episode three is currently available and is up next, so you can go tune into that. And with that, I want to thank y'all for tuning in and giving. So I came across this post a listen or a look. I appreciate you all so, 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 so much. I love you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And please keep embracing and living your truth. Until next time. I love you the most. Take care, babes.